The trend is set for both Bitcoin and Ethereum, and it's not up, it's looking down. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are, whenever you are. Thank you for watching my videos. My name is DaVinci Jeremy. I'm in the pipe 5x5, five five. even though Bitcoin and Ethereum has dumped. We did tell you that, hey, if it did break to a certain level, then it is going to break down. And I'm going to tell you what that level is, because if you watched yesterday's video and you did see yesterday's video, I told you so. I told you that, yeah, even though I was like bullish, if it broke a certain level, I had to go bearish. And this is what happened, fortunately. Well, with that said, we're going to look at that on the charts. I and mean, if you're interested in trading, make sure you do so at bybit.davinciej15.com or 2bit.davinciej15.com. Links are in the description below. I'm also up for an award here, um, nominated for the best crypto influencer. You guys just have to vote. Thank you for all your votes. Um, links are in the description to vote for this. Um, I really appreciate it if you do. All right. With that said, first news article of the day is a blockchain sleuth warns about unrevealed crit critical flaw in Athena. Well, Athena is some sort of blockchain, layer one blockchain, tarred wife whale, right? Blockchain sleuth who predicted the fall of Luna and USDT. So we have to, you have to listen to this guy. Honestly, um, I mean, it didn't take too, it wouldn't have taken a genius to actually figure out that USDT and Luna was uh, not going to work. I just assumed, right, that they followed the same maker, but they didn't. But anyways, a rising, Athena is a rising blockchain synthetic dollar stablecoin protocol. Tard Phi Whale is asking for donations for certain entities before revealing these legend flaws as Athena has no bug bounty program. That's bad. That's bad. When you're dealing with people's money and you're, you're dealing with a large sums of money, um, you should have like some sort of bug bounty program. Um, they should open one up. And so that, um, you know, um, people like him can actually uh, provide that information and they can fix it before it actually becomes a big thing. Unfortunately, they didn't, and so it sounds a little bit like he is extorting them, um, but he is giving a, the money to asking them to donate it, so, but I don't think they're going to do that. Uh, if you do, if they did, then, you know, that would create a problem for them in the future. This is on the verge of Athena uh, doing some airdrops of uh, 750 million in uh, its governance token, and who knows, let's see what happens. It would be bad if this guy uh, revealed the flaw, um, right, uh, to the public. If he reveals it to them privately, um, that would be better. And, you know, um, if they do nothing, if they provide no value, you, I, I would not be using this blockchain. If they don't provide any kind of, like, returns, reciprocated um, value, right? They don't have to do a million, which this guy's asking for, but they have to give something, right? Uh, out of respect. All right, with that said, uh, Vitalik Buterin shares his next step for Ethereum Purge. Now, there's not much here for, for the average person, but all it's doing is that they're going to be able to allow you to run nodes uh, with, with by uh, removing some of the data if once Purge is available. Now, this will strengthen Ethereum a little bit, uh, I think, because one of the things that they need to do only if they stop updating it, of course, right? If they if there's more nodes, right, and the nodes don't have to upgrade all the time, and they stop uh, the upgrades, and there's a frozen, um, like, ossified uh, version of Ethereum, it becomes harder for governments to attack because now, if it's if it's a core part of of all the functionality is a core part of the equipment and hardware, and it's embedded in hardware and stuff like that, it, you can't really change it. So um, that would be a move in the right direction, um, making it easier, of course, to for the nodes in, uh, to exist. All right, uh, moving on. Tron argues SEC not a worldwide regulator. Lawsuit goes too far. Yes, I know. That's the problem, right? A lot of people come to me with ideas that um, are against the SEC, right? And there's nothing wrong with that, right? You can build a a project that 
is breaks the rules of the, the, the Securities Exchange Commission. However, just understand, they're going to come and get you. <laughs> so better make a lot of money right away, fast. You got to move fast, fast, fast so that you can have the wealth to defend yourself in court. Because uh, no matter what, they're going to come and get you, no matter who you are, where you are. Even if you didn't sell anything to an American, um, it doesn't really matter. The entity behind them, the layer one blockchain Tron has asked the New York federal court to dismiss the United States Security Exchange Commission lawsuit against it, arguing the U.S. regulators targeting a, a predominantly foreign con uh, conduct, right? I mean, yeah, exactly. It's like whatever, then if you are going to sue them and stop them, right? Um, why don't you just you know, sue, you know, South Korea. <laughs> right? <laughs> oh, that's right. They don't have guns. Ah, I see. <laughs> oh, they don't have weapons. Right? That's why. Right? So this is where, you know, um, you know, you need to like, your only weapon is uh, cash to, um, you know, pay for the best lawyers. If you, um, you know, break the SEC rules, which you know what, everything breaks the SEC rules. So don't even bother thinking, don't even say, oh, does that break the SEC rules? Just say, yes, it does. And move on and build fast. <laughs> That's it. Right. Okay. So the SEC is not a worldwide regular duh. And it's efforts to apply U.S. securities laws to uh, predominantly foreign conduct goes too far. The Tron Foundation said on March uh, 28th dismissal motion uh, in the New York federal court. Now, I doubt this is going to be dismissed, but hey, you know what? Um, it should be. Crypto market round up core and uh, wife out shine in, in a week of market volatility. Okay, wow. So on April 1, over... Overall, cryptocurrency market witnessed a decrease of 2.2% over the last day, and Bitcoin and Ethereum fell by oof, 2 and 3% respectively against the U.S. dollar. Despite this downturn, the past past week saw 14 digital assets experience notably increase with the crypto token core soaring 774% and wife climbing 50%. Je what? Jesus. Jesus. Wow. Yeah, dog wife hat. Oof. I think it's with hat. Dog with hat. Damn. Like, Jesus. This doggy thing. I just don't get it. Because it's just literally just dog with hat. That's it. That's it. All right. With that said, what's going on with the Bitcoin market? Are we going to go down further? Probably we're going to fill the gap on uh, 64K. That's the that's the, the target for uh, Bitcoin right now. Uh, I'd be careful. This is like setting you up. I know this is this was a um, not a trend line. It was just to say, hey, this this is the target. And so we did hit the target once we broke this level here. Boom, boom. That was a target. That's what I showed you guys yesterday. And if you take, took part, if you took a short here, probably would have had to suffer a bit, but then you were like happy, then had suffer, then happy again. But yeah, um, you could have added to your shorts because once we broke this area, that was it. That was the indication. It was game over. Game over. Um, we, we told you that, right? If uh, Yesterday, if we broke this level here, um, that was it. Um, the the sixty nine. It was approximately the sixty nine thirty five ish area. That was game over. And <laughs> right there, right, <laughs> we said it. Um, looking at Ethereum, it was pretty much the same mirror thing. We were saying, hey, it was a little bit lower level, but here it is. Uh, once we broke that, it was game over. We came back, test, retested, and then down. Yeah. So where do we go from here? Well, I mean, uh, if we look at Ethereum, it has a little bit more to go to the 61.8. So an easy target there for you to uh, take a short on. I would wait for it to, um, you know, 
maybe pump back up a little bit to get into a better position. If you want to take a short here, you can take start small, start small, and if it comes up, you add to it because it will roll over. Um, but just remember, it could come all the way back up to the um, to uh, the four thirty thirty four hundred dollar mark or you know, thirty four eighty six area to retest that highs. But I doubt it. It probably will, a maximum go up to the thirty four hundred ish area. So you'll probably be safe. Um, you could probably take a stop loss halfway through that. But um, yeah, I think anywhere in anywhere in here, a stop loss would be fine um, for you to make sure that you don't get uh, wiped out. All right. With that said, let's just quickly take a look at Sheeb. Sheeb has taken his hit its target. As I've said, it was like 27. and But we could go even further and head all the way back down to the uh, 2400 ish area. Um, I'm loath to say that that's going to happen, but hey, you know what? This looks looks like it wants to target that at this point in time. So be careful out there. Um, right now we're oversold, so we might um, we might have a, see a bounce after it jumps a little bit more, and then go up for a bounce, coming back up to retest the the um, the 2800 ish area before it rolls over and if it wants to retest the uh, 2400 it will okay with that said um thank you all for watching i hope you enjoyed today's episode i will be back tomorrow and probably be i will yeah no i will definitely be on the moon show tomorrow as well so make sure you check that out and i'll see you guys tomorrow cheers <laughs>